Bird, 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 bird! Feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. It is the 26th of July, and I don't know. I don't know if – I don't know how many of you people listen to me in West Michigan. I'm just – I'm going I'm to really – I'm going to narrow this down. West Michigan, okay? I, I, know, I know a lot of you do. But I know a lot of you live in hotter places than this and colder places than this and rainier places than this. But I'm telling you what, I'm wussing out here. Typical Michigan summer, I'm telling you, we get a hot week or two. But another day at 90 degrees today, another day of just, I can't take it anymore. The dogs can't take it anymore. Uh, I can't take it anymore. I'm ready, I'm ready to move. I, I need a climate-controlled planet. I, I, I'm, I find myself sitting in the kennel here. I got air conditioning in the kennel. My wife does not, well, I shouldn't say she doesn't believe in air conditioning. We, had, we built this house 30 years ago without air conditioning. And, a, and we have huge, huge shade trees. We, we live in a very large, very older oak forest, okay? So our house is shaded, you know, until it's high noon, our house is shaded from sunrise and then the sunset. And... Literally, a typical summer, we might throw an air conditioner unit in the window for a week or 10 days, maybe, you know, maybe. Um, or, you know, get a hot day in August and we cool the room off at night. For I'm telling you what, we got four window air conditioners. We got one in the back room, or they're really not window. They're those stand-up ones that you vent out the bottom of a window. <coughs> I can't take it anymore. I don't know how anybody who lives in Arizona, I, I guess you just live with this this noise on all the time, this cold air. I, I mm -mm. You can see, I don't know. I thought it was the COVID getting to me. I really did. Not the COVID like the virus, the whole situation getting to me. But no, I think it's the damn heat. I don't do well in it. I sweat peeling an orange in this kind of he in this kind of heat. It uh anyway, so how is everybody's week, huh? How's that? Uh, my Patreon patrons, we had a great Zoom last Thursday. Uh, Jordan Horrock came on. In fact, I went up to pick up Taffy from him no less than, I think, 16 hours after we hung up from doing the Zoom room on Thursday night. So I'm going to give you a little report on Taffy. And uh, I just want to say thank you for the, the Patreon patrons who, who look at their emails and who get their, um, you know, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, it's two hours long. Of course, nobody, you don't have to stay in there the whole time. Actually, most of the people did stay in there the whole time. But, uh, you know, I, I know you got kids to put to bed. You got wives. You got different shifts. You got to do work from home, it, you know. But the, the people that join in, you know, it's like it, it's just like the, uh, the Hunter's Happy Hour. I, I, I look forward to seeing the boys, you know, the other podcasters on Tuesday and, uh, and the Zoom room on Thursday getting to know my listeners. It's we're we're really having fun. So I hope if you're a Patreon patron, uh, start tuning in. We got plenty of room for you. I bought the big Zoom package. Okay, um, we've got plenty of room. There's a lot of you out there, and I know percentage-wise, a very small percentage can spare two hours on a on a Thursday night. But if you can, join in once in a while. And I am going to somehow work the magic. We had such a good podcast with Jordan talking about training spaniels and training flushers. Um, and everyone knows that Justin McGrail and I are, uh, we, we, uh, I've, been, I've been working under his, let's just say I've been working under his tutelage, if you will. Um, no, and I'm not going to hang my shingle up as a dog trainer, but I've been with him a lot and working with him a lot. And everyone loves the podcast we do with Justin. And we'll, we'll do another one of them for sure. But I am going to force him. Actually, I'm going to force his wife, Tiffany, to teach him how to open up the laptop because he doesn't have one, but she does. And I'm going to get him on a Thursday. Night. I'm going to try to do it on Thursday. Where are we at here? July, that was Jordan. So that would be, boom, uh, August 6th. Would that be right? 
August 6th. Yeah. August 6th will be the next Zoom room. And I'm going to try to get Jordan on, or uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get Justin on there. And uh, so please, if you're, uh, if, if, if you haven't had the time, make the time to come to that one. You're going to get some in-depth questions. And it's, it's so much easier for Justin to answer a question when he's live with you because when people write in, I always ask you, you know, write in questions, send me some questions, and we get tons of them, right? And then we pick through them because so many of them are similar. Um, but then we can't get a hold of that person. Like, ah, oh, he didn't say how old the dog was. He didn't say what part of the country he lives in. Didn't say if there was a prior or whatever. So this will be really, really fun and uh, really, really informative. And I might just make that Zoom room, you know, it, it'll be a, it's going to be all two hours. I'll bet you it runs into a third hour. So, looking forward to that, okay? And, of course, all the other discounts you get from being a Patreon patron. Now, Pike Gear, have you, have you seen? It, just got their gloves. I, I don't know what it is about Brent, but he just has to reinvent the whole Upland world, and God bless him for it. Pike Gear is technical clothing for the Upland hunter. Fact, fact is, I, I, gained a little, I gained a little weight this fall. Or that's this fall. I gained a little weight this spring, you know, mostly because I'm, I'm shut down from work. And uh, I didn't realize how much, you know, a couple days of jujitsu and a couple days of, you know, working on the floor with the guys or checking on the jobs and just, run, you know, my normal routine, which I'm out of right now. You know, I still drink the same amount of beer and smoke the same amount of cigars and, you know, eat the same meals. And all of a sudden... You know, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to play Santa Claus at uh, at Christmas time here when the grandkids come back. All I'm going to need is a white beard, and uh, so luckily Brent gave me originally 36s and 34s when he gave me my first Pike pants, and uh, even though they're stretchy and they're comfy and everything, you know what? When you went over the 35 inch, you know 34 don't feel good on your belly anymore, and so. I my wife came in the closet. The closet in the no. Uh, there's a I have a vertical closet in the laundry room, and I have, I look like a kid emptying drawers on the. I could not. She goes, "What are you looking for?" I said, "My Pike pants." She goes, "They're in your or upstairs." I said, "No, those are my other Pike pants. My original Pike pants." She goes, "I don't know what you're talking about." I said, "I know," and I'm just pitching shit out, pitching shit. There they were, like right at the bottom, and I put them on today, and I was like, oh. and they. They feel just as comfy as my 34s did last October. And uh, my God, was I glad to find them. I have got to, in fact, I'm doing this on a Sunday night. I told my wife, I said, no beer tonight. And she says, well, aren't we going to sit on the deck and play Farkle? I'm like, yeah, we can do that. But I'm drinking a wilderness athlete, hydrate and recover. And that's that. I am not, no. This has got to stop. I'm looking like Bobo the Clown. And, uh, and even though Pike Gear comes in all those different sizes, I don't want to fit in all of them. I want to fit in the large, not the extra large. And technical clothing for the Upland, it is the comfiest stuff in the world. I just wore it all day. I was weed whacking, mowing the grass, digging up bushes. And this was even, this wasn't the drifter pants. This was the original ones with the facing on the front. As hot as it was here today, my, to my, my body was sweating. My back was sweating. Um, but my legs weren't hot. That's, it's a great material. I don't know what it is. I think it's magic. You know, FM, magic. Anyway, Gunner Kennels, that's magic too. It's, it's magic the fact that that, con that kennel could withstand, I don't know, what was it? Two asteroid collisions or something like that? Th did you hear they put a Gunner Kennel on, on one of those, those space shuttles that crashed? They, they did. They, they, see, I don't know why I get all these news flashes in, in, in my feeds. It, yeah, they are now the only space crash tested kennel on the market. Yeah, the the kennel came back. They they only put a stuffed dog in it. They didn't bring a real dog with it. And we lost the astronauts, unfortunately. But if you want something safe enough for a dog in space, you know what? Get a gunner kennel. That's going to make your dog safe on planet Earth. It is the best kennel, strongest, toughest, best doors, three locks. It's I, you, there's some imitation ones out there, and they're kind of looking like them. They're, they're not close. They're, they are not close. 
All right, and Patreon patrons, don't forget, you get a nice discount. Hey, back to, I got to jump back to Patreon patrons for a minute. Um, I get a, a monthly report from Patreon, and it'll say so many people join, so many people decline, so many people join. And I always wonder if, and, and I, I, I'm putting this out to anybody who is a past patron or a patron that's considering, you know, dropping out. Uh, of being a patron, and, and I understand there's finances, there's things that come in the way, and uh, that's 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 you know all understood. But if you're a patron who recently, let's just say you're still listening to the show, and 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 you're not a patron, I, I, a friend of mine believes that the cards are just expired, and people don't pay attention. They don't look for a five dollar thing on them. They just pay their their charge card bill every month. So. I'd like to know from my listeners who were, were patrons, did you do it to get the discounts? Did you do it to get a one-time discount and say, well, hey, that was smart. I got a, you know, I got a Gunner Kennel for less money and it only cost me five bucks. I, you know, and I'm okay with that. I understand that is the way things work. But if there's something I'm doing or something that I am not doing that would bring you back as a patron, I would like to know what that is. Because this is the, my job the rest of my life now. I'm going to be yakking on the air like this. And, and when you think this is the world's longest intro, this is because the whole, the whole episode, it, wait, we're going to, don't skip this because you'll be skipping the whole podcast. All right? So believe me, I would love to hear from you. If you're a past patron, let me know what I've done that, that either made you drop out or made you go in the first place. I, I'm really curious because this is part of, the reason I can keep doing this podcast, and I've got to make it attractive. And, and you know, and if you're going to call me up and say it's because of the sound quality, well, you're the dummy who gave me five dollars a month for bad sound, and this isn't bad sound. Now I'm working with my Zoom, my Zoom, my Sennheiser uh, headset, so this can't be bad sound. Um, let me know what it is. I would love to know. Appreciate it. Or and also, as long as you're just listening, the rest of you sixty thousand listeners, um, what would it take to make you become? a Patreon patron. You know, maybe I, I don't have tears on my Patreon thing. You know, maybe maybe you say, well, you know what, I don't want to be just, I, who knows? I'd love your input. I'd love all your inputs. I, you know, I got nothing else to do. Um, so there. I, you know what I have to do tomorrow? I've got to figure out how to drop a pin on my Onyx. Now, I've had people drop me a pin, and I am so poor at doing this stuff. I, I don't... Even get in the Zoom room on Thursdays. I mean, R R Rusty, my best buddy, Roof, him, him and I practice. And he's like, Ron, hit the mute. Ron, make me the host. Ron, I'm like, I, I, don't yell at me. Now, last week, it was almost seamless. Now, I haven't done this a lot. I have received a couple pins. It was easy to do it. But I had a call. I had a call friend up, figure out how to do it. Tomorrow, I got to do it. I got I to gotta send somebody a, a pin. Well, I'm not going to tell you who it is and where they're going to hunt because then everybody's going to want that pin. Anyway. It is one of the coolest features of the Onyx Hunt Map system. You can share your location, even if it's just where you want to meet them. If you guys are going to meet for a duck hunt in the morning or a deer hunt or breakfast or anywhere, you know, you can just plink. You can just pin it right on your Onyx map. Of course, your buddy's got to have Onyx. Of course, that's the whole idea why I'm advertising for Onyx, because we want all of you to have Onyx map system for hunting season, really. We'd also like you to have a CZ USA shotgun. I would love you to have one. I've got, well, the two left-handed ones that they sent me, and, uh, and I'm getting another left-handed one. I'm going to have to buy that one. Of course, it'll be at a discount, but I'm going to have to buy it. And they're also going to send me a 1012. That's the, the auto loader that they use for the Guinness uh, clay record shoot. I shot the heck out of that in Ohio at the Cardinal Center. Wow, that gun. Um, I know all, you know what? All auto loaders fail. All auto, auto loaders jam. But I'll tell you something, uh, Kaylee, Michaela, who was shooting on the, the, the Guinness team, was also there shooting um, for competition, brought her 1012, and she had not cleaned it since October. She had not cleaned. You know what? If you know me enough, if you've seen this kennel, when I, I, I clean it when people are coming over, that's a gun for me. I want, I want an auto loader that I can clean twice a year. Um, CZ USA, they have so many different models, break opens, up, you know, over, under, side by sides, lightweight, featherweight, uh, pillow weight, uh, hydrogen weight. 
they have uh, helium. They, I think they got a new helium weight shotgun. It actually doesn't weigh anything. You put the shells in it, and it falls to the ground. It's crazy. Uh, it's like carrying nothing. It's like it's like I ain't wearing nothing. <laughs> it's kind of like kind of like my wilderness athlete. When I start taking that stuff, I, I take a little. In fact, you know, I think I think some of that stuff must have fermented. I have I am beer free, and I'm starting to get giddy. I, I am, and I, I just finished uh, I just finished a uh, an energy and focus. So oh, what was it? The lime flavored. I just finished that, and man, I. I don't know. Maybe it had been in the kennel so long. It, this is one of my older tubs that they sent me back in October, and I found it. And uh, it, it might have fermented. But I hope, I hope the stuff for my dogs don't. The new dog and hydrate and recover, um, that uh, they kept me in f- plenty of supply of. That is not from October. So hopefully the, I, I don't want my dogs to feel like I do. I'm feeling all silly. Um, new dog has really – two things. I told you, Bravo – um, he's acting, he, I'm telling you, he just acts younger. He's doing a couple of those things that he used to do a couple of years ago, like the latching and, and just playing more. Like I got a little taffy back here and playing more. And we're also giving it to Sue's uh, 13-year-old Corgi. Her 15-year-old Corgi died uh, back in January. But her 13-year-old Corgi, boy, that dog, you know, it's a little dog. It's, you know, you think they're going to live forever? No. And that one... That one, I'm telling you what, brought that thing back to the brink of... Uh, now, it's not fixing this dog. This dog's not doing agility. But we were seeing her not one... To, first sign, especially maybe it's those long back dogs. First sign is they, they try to get up the stairs. we got a pretty steep staircase in our house. And they have a little trouble getting up. And then they decide that they don't want to come down. And then, honestly, my wife will sit on her butt and scoot down the stairs with these silly corgis in the morning. She loves him, so that's her job, I guess. But Rocket, about two months ago, I asked Sue, I said, where's Rocket? She goes, well, I brought her down. And I said, I think she's upstairs. And she went back upstairs by herself. And then Sue called her because it was time to eat. And, you know, when you call a corgi to food, that it's, it's time to eat. And you would hear, chum, chum, chum. she found a way to get down them stairs. So I'm telling you what, new dog <clears throat> will get your dog to be a new dog. And hydrate and recover this time of year, it's, it's going to be super. I got a feeling the way this summer's going, it's going to be a murderous opening season. And you should have hydrate and recover in your truck kit for your dogs. Even if you're not using the new dog, if you think my dog's only two years old, don't need it, fine. But hydrate and recover, you got to use that stuff for your dog when they exercise, especially in this kind of heat. And when you get done with that, you're going to feed them once a day on a hunting trip, right? Once a day. I, I've got a sheet here. The podcast is going to be about dog myths. Um, but here's I'm going to dispel one myth right now. People ask me, how many times a day do I feed a dog? During the, during the off season, I feed them twice a day. Now, if I go out to the grounds on a Wednesday, I'll feed them in the morning, and then they don't get their dinner meal. They go out with me on a Wednesday night, and then they eat back when I get back here at 10 o'clock at night. But come hunting season... I go right into one meal a day, okay? And anybody, can anybody guess what, that, what I'm using for that one meal a day is? Any, anybody? I, can I see any hands? Ah, you, you. Yes, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Boy, that was a long way getting there, wasn't it? Best food on the market, best food you can put in your dog's belly. And uh, that's, take that to the bank. You, when you go to the bank, you could wear your, if it's raining out, you could wear your Gumleaf USA boots. But problem is around Michigan, we've had like one rain. The only thing I mowed today and cut with weeds was weeds. I don't know why weeds grow in a drought and grass won't. But um, I did not wear my gum leaf boots today. But if it was raining, if it's raining where you are, or if you're going to be hunting grouse and woodcock in in the in the wet north woods, don't wait to get your gum leaf boots. Get them now. In fact, they may be they may be hard to find come October. I shouldn't even tell you that. They may be hard to find. And if you're a Patreon patron, you find me before you find your gum leaf boots, and I'll take care of you. Same thing with Backridge Ammunition. Now, Adam sent me a shipping. Hold on. I'm going to hit pause on this. This is important. You know what? Never mind. I'll just tell you that Backridge Ammunition is the craft beer of non-tox ammunition because the promo code that he was supposed to send me, he did. Um, 
but it was all related to the uh, Patreon people who get free shipping. Anyway, sorry about that. My bad. My bad. Um, where are we at here? White Lake Hunting Lodge. I just know two more people signed up for White Lake Hunting Lodge. They just called me and said, all right, Ron, we're doing it. We don't care what happens. We don't care if we have to wear masks driving down the interstate. As long as we can go hunting and chase some pheasants, old-fashioned South Dakota driven hunt. You can find time in the afternoon. You can hunt a day before or a day after in South Dakota. You have all kinds of possibilities. In fact, South Dakota Department of Tourism is jumping back on board for a couple months, but You'll get that commercial next week. Um, but White Lake Hunting Lodge, it is, I, I told you before, it, of course it costs money. Of course it's not, it's not free like this podcast. It costs money. You get four nights, of, you know, five nights of lodging, four days of hunting. Most lodges out there, seriously, you, you look them up. They got three-day packages. They do three-day turnaround, clean up a day, three-day. no. Not, 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 no, not out here. No, they give you a bang for your buck, and you will pull the trigger on a bunch of pheasants. I tr- I guarantee, well, if it's anything like last year, and I hear it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a hoot, and it's my birthday. We're going to celebrate my 63rd birthday out there. We're going to have a Halloween party right downtown White Lake at one of the bars, and it's going to be a hoot nanny, hoot nanny. And anyway... So don't forget that. Don't forget the website. Don't forget to go to iTunes once in a blue moon. Don't forget all the stuff I tell you to do. Subscribe to the website. Look at the Taffy Talks. I'll tell you what. She's home. That's right. She's home. My little my little mahogany colored. She looked like same color as a boykin. Well, Jordan has outside kennel runs. They have inside under the house, but outside during the day. And she is bleached. She... Looks something around, what would you call it? Not quite a visula, but she ain't liver brown anymore. And she's got highlights. The long hair on top of her head, it's all highlights. Looks like, looks, it looks like Jordan's daughter, you know, got, got a highlight kit for her. She's goofy looking, but she's back. She's got some manners. I've got a lot of work to do. I've got... Well, it's going to be challenging. I'm, I'll be honest with you. It's a little, it's a little scary. Um, you know, try, trying to apply everything that Jordan taught me that he's done with her using the Decato place boards. Uh, what a tool. I, I will, the next pup I get, well, I actually, I've, I've been working uh, Zara on it for just a couple commands, but this thing is going to be a puppy training tool from here on out for me and then later on training. But that, that place board, that Cato place board, what, what she, I don't know what it is about it. It's like, it's like a little schoolhouse that she loves going to. Not like when I was a kid. I didn't like going to the schoolhouse. I just, you know, I didn't mind running them down the stairs and, you know, jumping off the handrail. But once I got inside the school, I didn't like it. But Taffy loves it. He told me that she's a really good student, but she was really a little squirrely. And I'm like, well, that'd be, that'd be my fault. And he says, gunfire was the hardest thing. He said, I got her steady with a tennis ball, then on to clip wing pigeons and flyaway pigeons. They, he says he struggled for the gunshot, and I know exactly why it was. That was all me. Part of that thing at White Lake last year with the, the, the 50 minutes in the cornfield and people shooting on the other side of the cornfield, and it's, I, didn't do her, I didn't do her any favors. But I think she is salvageable. She can hunt in range, she can sit on a bird, or she can hop, as we Spaniel people say, hop, hop. I don't know, why would they say hop? Why wouldn't they just say sit? Same three letters, it's not, not any quicker, but I think it sounds cooler, hop. And uh, she's a hopper now, and uh, I cannot wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break her in easy. I am not going to throw her out there. In fact, she's going to come to White Lake, but she is not going on that driven hunt. Not until I see this dog really proof tested. It's called teach, train, and proof. Remember those three things. Teach, train, proof. Teach it, train it, proof it. And she's got a little more. She's been taught it. She's got to get a little more training, and she's going to need it proofed. And, uh, boy, I'm so glad to have her back. I have never had a dog gone for that long in my entire life. Never. I think Hasco, I brought up to Harmeyer's, 
oh my God, it was, uh, I think maybe two weeks. I ran up there, I met Al and Tracy. They worked on some force fetching before I ever messed with that. And then I came up to Apprentice Judge and I picked him back up. And of course, I, you know, H Haskell was, you know, Haskell didn't really like me anyway, so it was kind of a mutual, I was kind of glad that he was there. I miss Taffy. In the beginning, it was tough because I'm like, oh, I don't have Taffy. She's like my little lap dog. You know, she, you know, anything you do, she's so attentive to you. And then about a month into it, you know, with COVID in full swing and nobody going anywhere, I literally forgot about the dog. You know, I mean, from day to day. It was never on my mind moment to moment. And then in the last few weeks when I knew I was going to be picking her up uh, before the family comes home from Florida, I was dying to see this little dog. And when Jordan let, him, let her out, I'm like, well, I think Sabrina, that's his daughter, I think Sabrina got the wrong cocker. Could you get my cocker? He goes, oh, that's Taffy. I said, Taffy wasn't that color when I dropped her off here. I'm going to charge him for a dye job. But anyway, it's so cool to have her home. Um, if people, this is, a, this is a myth, okay? And that's what this episode is. I'm going to go over one of my listeners I printed this off, and I apologize. Your name is not on this print off. But this list of myths. I was going to do this with, George, uh, with Jared. Uh, gee, many Christmas. Somebody's got to have a name that doesn't start with the letter J. Justin. So I showed Justin this a while back, and he says, oh, we can't just run through this. This, this, this is, you know, oh, we could go in for hours on this stuff. I said, well, you know what? I'll do it on one of my shows because I'm going to give you my answers on these dog myths. But here's dog no myth number one that's not on this list. I, my dog won't remember me if it goes to a trainer. My dog won't remember me after a certain amount of time. That's ridiculous. I think a stranger could have picked up Taffy, and she'd have been just as happy to see a stranger. She's just a dog with a good, solid personality. It, it doesn't matter who has them, who picks them up. who fe They love everybody. But I'll tell you what. <clears throat> When I, when I saw her, I had this little bitty thought. Um, she wanted to go right outside and work with Jordan. She saw he had the big, a big shoulder bag on for pigeons. And she wasn't really paying attention to me. And I'm like, okay, now if my wife was here, she'd say the dog's mad at you for leaving her there. Well, that's not true because that's anthropomorphizing, and that's not going to happen. And uh, I was like, and she kept coming up to me and sniffing me. And, it, it's, and I'm thinking, of course, there's that part of me that was, that was anthropomorphizing, thinking, oh, she smells me now. No, no, Jordan had that bird bag. It's all about work. It's, it's like she went to camp, and she came back with some merit badges. And we had a, we, in fact, we had to take a couple breaks. It was so damn hot in Wisconsin. It, you, you just couldn't run her in the yard. She runs like, I, I mean, if you've ever seen the amount of effort a cocker puts into running, is, it, it makes other dogs look lazy. And uh, it was hot, so we had to take a couple breaks. And when we got all done, I, I put her in the kennel. And I stopped and gave her a, 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 little, a little cool down on a, well, anyway, I, I got kicked off that property. It was on Oshkosh. It, it, uh, the Oshkosh World Headquarters kicked me off their property. I was just walking a little dog there in, on their pond. But anyway, um, when we got to the motel right around the corner, uh, she wouldn't get off my lap. I mean, she would, and wouldn't stop sniffing me. Like, and, and she's been on my lap a thousand times. She'll come up on my lap here at the big table where I, where I record, and she'll sit on my lap, but she won't be sniffing me. She'll just be looking around the table. Every once in a while, she wants to crawl on the table, and I won't let her. And then when she gets a little bored, maybe 10, 15 minutes, she just wants to get down. So this room had a, a, an armchair in it, uh, like a, an old lazy boy, and she's up in my lap. And I'm telling you what, it was, I mean, I, I, I had to put her in her kennel after about an hour of trying to get her to not be in my face. Between sniffing it and licking it and then sniffing my, my arm, my elbow, my, ch I mean, it, it's like I think she had to go like, ah, I knew it was you. I wasn't sure because that other guy had a bunch of pigeons in his bag. I knew it was you. And uh, so anyway, I'm glad Taffy's home. Glaff <laughs> Taff Glaffy. Taffy's glad she's home. I've got a lot of work to do. I'm, I'm set to do it. I've got the time. I don't have, I don't have that. Well, it's, it's just another skill set, okay? 
In fact, that is one of the, there, there's a training myth question on here. So I'm going to, uh, just one second here. I'm going to put a couple dogs away because Miller is driving, he always drives me crazy. Boy, he is a pain in the butt, that dog. Um, all right, hey, one last thing. To, well, it's, it's not like one last thing. This is, the, the intro is the episode. It's just going to go right into the myths. Um, no guests this week. I got to do a guest. I got to do an interview on Monday. I got to do an interview on Friday, Saturday. And uh, I've got a bunch of stuff lined up, but the one I'm doing Monday uh, has a release date. It's, it's, it's kind of a surprise. Um, somebody you don't know, but somebody you probably will get to know or will, will know after that podcast, but their organization wanted it. Uh, they gave, they have a certain release date for that one. So anyway, um, yeah, that is a whole podcast, but I do want to say before I get into the dog myths that, uh, you did, you might've noticed that I didn't say Salem auto sports. Okay. Well, on my way to Wisconsin, I drove up there, got taffy, came back, went to the Cross Lake Ferry the next day, came back to Muskegon and left that truck for Brandon at Salem Auto Sports. And I want to thank him for that truck sponsorship for the year. And I, I from the bottom of my heart, I put that call out over a year ago. And next day I had an email. He says, hey, I got a truck dealership. So if you are ever looking for a used clean truck, give him a shout. Salem Auto Sports over in Wisconsin. And uh, I, I really thank him for everything he did. And uh, it was a gamble. It was a gamble. I think he was happy with it. I was happy with it. In fact, he even said, he goes, hey, Ron, if you want to do this again, I'll just sell you that truck. And I'll sell it to you for, you know, a very discounted price. And I was very tempted. But I had just kind of re-inherited one of my work trucks that was still being payments made on. And now that I'm retired, that work truck has become my podcast truck. Anyway, Brandon, thanks again. I'm going to see you. I know you're coming out to South Dakota with Hoover or Adonis or Adilius or Adidas, whatever his name is. Really nice German short hair. I call him Hoover. All right. Now, myths. Okay. First of all, these are, these are my opinions. Okay. You might hear some comment on some of these questions. You might hear some real facts that you could back up in Google. But opinions are like what? No, I know what you're thinking. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got at least two of them. And sometimes they both stink. Sometimes they just one stink. You ever notice that? You, well, what, the hap- what happened to that arm? So somebody's opinions might stink in your opinion. But here, first one, very simple. Dogs only see in black and white. No. No. They don't see. They don't see the rainbow of spectrum of colors like we do, but they don't see only in black and white. They, like, just like us, they see white very, very brilliantly. White to them is like fluorescent green or orange to us. It sticks out in our eyes, okay? <clears throat> but no, they have, they have a, a spectrum of colors. This one, this one really irks me, and this happened because of the Walters book. Puppies must go home at 49 days. And I know most of you know that's not true, but Ed Bailey, who knows more about dog behavior than anybody else, wrote for Gun Dog Magazine for years. In fact, he, might, he still might write for, I don't know who he writes for now. He's a, one of the, the founders of NAVDA, and he's a dog behaviorist. And I don't mean like he's coming to your house to tell you why your dog's depressed. He's talking about science-based, you know, dog behavior. The best thing, the best thing that a, 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 a breeder can do is for one, have a very well-socialized litter of puppies, have people come over, have kids come over, have, obviously you have to take precautions before there's shots and everything. Don't, we don't need emails about that. That's common sense. Ed Bailey told me dogs shouldn't go home till they're 12 weeks old. He said, if you want the most balanced dog that you could possibly get, get him at 12 weeks. Now, that being said, if the breeder isn't taking care of them. If the breeder just letting them become hooligans, if the breeder's not doing anything with them or breaking up the, f- I don't mean breaking up the fights, they, after, most of us get a dog now at eight weeks. Some of us are waiting a little bit longer. And uh, right around eight weeks, or I think maybe around six weeks, you know, those dogs start learning how to, those puppies start learning how to be dogs. And their mother is key to that role. And their siblings are key to that role. And if you just take them all out of there at one you know, sure, you can dodge a bullet. I've dodged it. 
I've had dogs come here at eight weeks, ten weeks, nine weeks. I think they're fine. I don't know what they could have been if they were home for another week. But in the right breeder, in the right facility, do not think that you have to get a dog home even at eight weeks. I would even ask the breeder if he's keeping a dog. And it, actually, I did this with, um, with, Ta- with Taffy. Now, you can say I, I screwed her up by letting her be a spoiled brat. But she was about as well adjusted as a dog I've ever brought home. And I think she was about 12 weeks old. And because, for one, it was in Atlanta, south of Atlanta, and I had to make a trip to go down there. And I asked her, and, and I said, as long as you're going to have a couple puppies around, I want it as late as I can get it. I do not want this dog at eight weeks. I want, it, I want to listen to what Ed Bailey says. And I'm telling you what, spot on. So this puppy go home at 49 days? That was written, in a, I think, in a Richard Walters book on water dog or game dog. And it screwed up a whole lot of people. Now, could you get one at seven weeks, which is 49 days? Sure. Could it be the best dog you ever had? Sure. But it's risk versus reward, okay? 49 days is too young in most cases. So don't risk it. Don't let somebody talk you into that. Don't. That is... What you need to do is see the parents, and if possible, the grandparents, or find out about them, and you know what you're going to get. Pointing breeds should not be taught to sit. This is number three. Pointing breeds should not be taught to sit. I'll bet you a lot of people say, true. I say false. <laughs> I don't. Just another command to me. Now, in, in the studying process, do you want them to sit? No. You, you want them to be staunch. You want them to stand up. They, I, I think it looks like if a, a dog's on point and he goes to sit, oh, I, I think there's a real lack of intensity there. But being teaching a dog to sit is one of the first things we do when they're puppies. Teach them to sit. They ain't going to ruin it. All right, number four. Female dogs have less drive and desire than males. <laughs> no way. No way. I mean, think about the human race. If it wasn't for females, we wouldn't be here. No, they don't have less desire and less drive. The reason you see more champions that are males is... Because the females have heat cycles, which, because they're always going to be bred from a large kennel, from a competitive kennel, it, there's, just, there's less training time. You, you can't count on the heat cycle. You, it's, it's a thing that you will see more male champions. But females having less drive? Uh-uh. No way. It's what you put into a dog, what the dog's genes are, are what you're going to get out of that dog. And if that dog's mama was a, a ball of fire, you're going to have a little girl that's a ball of fire. Especially for grandma was. You know, grandmas have more influence on they had more influence on me, must have more influence on dogs. All right, number five. Neutered dogs have less drive and desire than intact dogs. I do not believe that. Now I've not had a lot of altered dogs. Now when he says neutered dogs, he he must mean also spayed females, because dog is male in the dog world. And uh so I'm sure the implica or the the question was, altered, sexually altered dogs, spayed or neutered dogs have less drive and desire. No. What they can do is sl- slow their metabolism down, lose a little testosterone. They can gain a little weight. We can start thinking they're retired. We can start thinking they look cute with an extra five pounds on them. You know, they might come up to you and say, hey, does this dog sweater make my butt look big? And you, you politely say no, and then you give them a full scoop of food after that. But no, I don't believe that. Okay? Again... Opinions are like armpits. I got two. Sometimes they're both sweet. Um, dogs must be force-fetched to be trained to retrieve. Mm. Wrong. Now, the question is kind of weird. He has it in parentheses. Dogs must be forced to be trained to retrieve, and in parentheses, force-fetched. So I know what he means. He means the dog must have a trained retrieve to be a retriever. And that is not, there are such good retrievers. Taffy's, Taffy's one of them. Bravo's one of them. Zygon was one of them. Artie was one of them. Queenie was not. <laughs> Queen, Queenie, if there was one other dog in the county, she'd say, hey, don't worry, he's going to come by and get it. I, I'll show you where it's at, but they, she, you know what? But if, if there was just me and Queenie, this, this goes back 30 years ago, if it was just me and Queenie and I shot a bird, she'd pick it up and... <laughs> It was funny because, you know, most dogs just won't pick them up if they're not going to pick them up. And she'd pick them up, 
And she'd walk about halfway to me and then just look at me. She goes, aren't you going to at least meet me halfway? And I always, like, I, I knew she didn't like to retrieve. And I'm telling you what, when there was other dogs in the, in, the, in the field with her that retrieved, she went to the point of, like, when a bird would go down and other dogs would go for it. Because, you know, you know, like, you've seen it where one bird gets up and you've, your buddies are out there with two or three dogs and they're all going for it. You know there's going to be a tail feather tear at the end of this retrieve. Queenie would see those other dogs going for the fallen bird, and she's like, I'll go find you another one. I'm not even going to go mess with those other dogs. Um, so, no, you don't have to be. If you want to rely on genetics for retrieving and your dog retrieves, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If you want clean, clean retrieving, if you want solid retrieving to hand without spitting out a bird, you know, you don't take hot weather into consideration, but most cases, if you want that, that nice presentation where a dog looks up at you and gives you the bird, yeah, you're going to want to do a trained retrieve. If you're going to want to send your dog on a blind retrieve, if you're going to duck hunt your dog, do you want a trained retrieve? Yes, because then the dog understands that the word fetch or whatever word you use means I go and I put something in my mouth. So, yeah, in certain situations, especially competition, People are going to do that, but dogs don't have to be force-fetched to be trained to retrieve. It is, a na- it is one of the natural instincts that a lot of dogs still retain to this day. Even some of the dog's last name happens to be Retriever, like Chesapeake Bay Retriever, Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever. Believe me not, they don't all retrieve, but most of them do. Number seven, you must be alpha to train your dog. Dog dominance. Uh-uh. Now, again, the wording of the question, you must be alpha. So that's, to me, it's an A-type personality. No. Because a good friend of mine, Dr. Dale Ray, he is no more an alpha A male personality than a man in the moon, and he could train the heck out of a dog. So, but I think what this person might have meant was, you must be alpha to train your dog. And in parentheses, dog dominance. I don't, it, that's still kind of loosey-goosey. What, what you have to put yourself in the position, in my armpit opinion, is you have to put yourself in the position of the teacher and the dog as a student. And what does that mean when we're in fifth grade? Yeah, teacher's boss, and I'm the student. At least that's what it was like in the 1960s. I don't know what you kids went to school like. It was, did you guys feel like the bo- teacher was the boss, or was she just the, the moderator? Was she just the, the, uh, a station on the television? I don't know how it is. But in my day, the teacher trained the student. Teacher, a good teacher didn't have to rule over you with a, a, an iron fist. They understood they could read kids just like you can read. You learn to read dogs. That's what it takes to train a dog, okay? Number eight, positive reinforcement training, training is permissive training. Now, I was going to actually look this up because I heard somebody on another podcast talk about permissive training, and I guess... I don't know what that means. So I'm going to go by the root of the word permission. See? That's because of that high-level education I had at Bogan High School. Positive reinforcement training is permissive training. So I'm going to say yes. I don't know why that would be in the myth, though. Positive reinforcement training is permissive training. I imagine it means I'm permitting the dog to do something and he's learning through it. All right. You guys can all write me about number eight because I don't get it. And even if I looked up the actual meaning of permissive training, the way the question's worded, I don't think I could have given a good answer. Um, here's, here's one. This one could get this into a full podcast. Um, you can't train a dog until they're six months old. That is probably one of the silliest. If that is a myth, it, it's a silly one. Stay tuned. Hold on. Dogs quit. So... I think I know where, well, I shouldn't say I know where this comes from. There, there's, a, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of myths. You'll, you'll hear about the, the trainers in England that they, they kind of say they just don't do anything with the dog for the first year. Everything in dog's life is, is a bit of training because they learn by association. So if you're letting them associate an event, a daily event, you are in turn training them. Just like you're going to potty train them. That's training. That's not getting a dog to pee outside and poop outside your house. That ain't luck, Missy and Mister. That's not luck at all. That's training. So right off the bat, that myth is again, if it is a myth, 
You can't train a dog until they're six months old. No, you train it to kennel. You train it to heal. You train it to sit. You train it to go to the bathroom. So there's so many things you train a dog before they're six months of age. So, again, just like these questions that I told you about in the intro, like when we have Justin on, <clears throat> it's going to be so much better to have the person who's asking the question. I would say, what do you mean? Formal training? Do you mean steady to wing shot and fall training? Do you mean force fetch? You know, what do you mean? But to say you can't train a dog until they're six months, if that is the actual question, that is wrong. Lots of things you can do before a dog is six months of age that do not require a lot of pressure. It's all association. That is how dogs learn. Repetition, association. Teach it, then train it, and then proof it. That's how it works. Whatever you do, whatever age. Now, you will know when a dog is ready for, let's say, some, some obedience training. Um, let's say you got a young dog, and all of a sudden... That cute little puppy that no matter where it was in the backyard or the backwoods, you'd go, hey, pop, 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 pop. And that son of a gun to rip over to you and just come up and tail wagon and all that stuff. You're like, oh, this, this is the best dog I've ever had in my life. Well, he's also three months old, you know, four months old. But all of a sudden there's that day when the dog's like really distracted and he's smelling something. And all of a sudden it decides that I, I don't really need that. I can find that guy anytime. And he die. I got a. I got a nose. I can backtrack back to him. Um, that can happen with a dog that's less than six months old, and they're going to need some come when called training. There, there's so many aspects to training a dog. So, uh, as far as a myth goes, you can't train a dog until they're six months old. Eh, eh, wrong. Number ten is food rewards are bribing the dog. Well, let me tell you, coming from a father of three daughters who used to take them shopping. Um, after Sunday school and on Saturdays and sometimes in the evening. Yeah, I think any food reward is a bribe. But you can get some darn good behavior if you don't overdo it. There's some sage advice from an old man who's got three of the smartest, prettiest, best kids in the world. Yeah, food rewards surely are bribing the dog. But what's wrong with a bribe? You know, what's wrong with a bribe if it's not abused? No, we're not talking the Sopranos kind of bribes here. You know, we're not talking Mayor Daly, City Hall, Chicago bribes. We're not doing a, a, an alderman trying to get a new park in the neighborhood. I'm talking about using a treat for a dog is a great way to get that response out of the dog and then repeat it and turn it into a learned behavior. So there, it is bribing. It's a good bribe. I bribed my kids. And I also threaten them with the food, too. If you don't, if you two don't start picking, if you two keep picking on each other, we are not going to Tasty Freeze, okay? I'd say that's not bribing. That's using it smart. Number 11, if you use food rewards, you'll have to use food, re food rewards for the rest of your life. Well, this goes right into 10, okay? Trust me. My kids listen to me to this day, at least in front of me, maybe not on a phone behind my back. But they listen to me, and I don't have to tell them that we're going to go to the Tasty Freeze and get an ice cream cone if they get the house cleaned up and their clothes picked up and fold their clothes. Okay? No. Again, if you used the food rewards properly, you would not have to, you're not going to live and die. You're not going to have a dog in the field that you're not going to be able to train because you forgot to bring the, the, the what is it, the dried lung treat or something like that. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, number 12. I guess it's kind of related to uh, number eight. Compulsion, compulsion training is the only way to train a dog. Again, I don't know what compulsion training is. So anybody want to write me about that one, compulsion training? I think, I think it has a positive kind. Of, I think you know, the dog is, is, is compulsed to do a trained behavior. I, I just don't know the vernacular, and honest to Pete, I didn't feel like taking the time to look it up and find out the description of compulsion training. But some tells me, when the, I can answer this as a true or false, though, in, in the myth category, it says compulsion training is the only way to train a dog. Eh. There's a lot of roads that can get you from here to South Dakota. You can take 80, 90, 94 and drop down. You can take 6. You can take... There's a whole lot of roads that you can train a dog on. There's a whole lot of ways to train a dog. So, no, compulsion training is, is not the only way to train a dog. And then the last one he wrote here was when training, <clears throat> I got a feeling 
he's going to join the Zoom room and maybe even join Patreon so he can ask these questions to Justin because I think we're going to go over some of these questions with Justin because then we're going to get some real detail. We're not going to get my armpit advice here. When training, you can't let the dog win. That's kind of there is there is times when you're not going to win, but then that calls for the trainer to be able to read the dog and say, "Okay, you want to say we lost? You want to say we didn't win? Okay, but we are going to go back to the step prior to what we just lost, as he said, because we didn't win. So we must, if we didn't win, we lost. So if we lost some ground somewhere in our training, we're going to take one step back." to where we didn't lose ground, where we did win, okay? Somewhere in your, your, your beautiful pyramid foundation of dog training that starts with a wide base and narrows up to the pinnacle, the point where you've got a finished gun dog that you're proud to own, somewhere one of them blocks shifted, okay? Or then you didn't teach it, train it, and proof it completely. And that's a common mistake. Dogs can some days just fool you. And you're like, oh, wow, we breezed, we breezed through that thing. So to say when training you can't let a dog win, I'm going to say it's false. Okay? But the word let is the key word here. You can't let the dog win. I don't feel any trainer, home trainer, DYI first time, is letting the dog win or and you're not you're certainly not letting them lose. Okay? You're working this together and sometimes you hit a hiccup. Some people would say, "Ah, no matter what, your dog wasn't steady on that. Pick that dog up and put it back where it was when it started pointing." Well, I learned this from Justin, that don't work. You might be able to scare the death out of your dog and he might be steady for the next two birds, but you didn't teach him anything by saying you ain't winning and you're going to go back 3 feet because that's where you were when you made the infraction. No, the infraction was made because you didn't teach it, train it, and then proof it. That's how you train a dog. Anyway, I hope you all had a, uh, I hope you all had a good week. I hope your heat wave, in fact, this week our heat wave's over for the most part. It's, uh, we're supposed to be in that, what I was telling you in the beginning, that wonderful Michigan 82, 83 degrees during the day. And, you know, even, even sometimes the high 50s. A Michigan summer night sometimes, you get out in the morning, you still might want to yeah, use that sweatshirt on you head out to campfire because it's our Michigan fall or our Michigan summer mornings can feel like fall. It's just so great. I mean, especially in the big woods here where I live. It, gets, it can get chilly. Um, so we're going to have a better week coming up. My family's coming up. My daughter and son-in-law and two grandsons are coming up from Florida. Other daughters coming in with her husband. My other daughter's coming in right, she lives nearby with her husband and their boy. And uh, so my three grand boys are all going to be in the same picture together, the same space together. And it's a monumental, monumental week for the BAME family. Um, I also want to tell you, well, I'll save that for another podcast. Um, yeah, that's that's another one. This this is too this is too positive a, a note for for that for sad stuff. Um, sad stuff can come later. In fact, that'll just be a, a perfect podcast one day. The sad podcast. But um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, just anyway, I want you to have a good week. Have a safe week. Just do yourself a favor. Don't overthink training. Take your time. Slow down. Teach it, train it, proof it. Love you guys, love you girls, and love you girls more. <laughs>